All right, so, so I want to pick up where I left off. We're just basically doing a part two here. You know, and I was talking about the recipe and the environment to produce the fulfillment of proce- prophecy. You know, I, th- I think about, you know, in my, in my years of, of food service, you know, I spent nine years at uh, Red Lobster, over nine years. And then after I left Red Lobster, I spent another nine years at P.F. Chang's as a cook, as a chef. You know, Esther, same thing. She, she spent, uh, this is where we met, was that Red Lobster. She, she was there, uh, you know, I want to say 20 years. Yeah. So, you know, recipes play a huge part in food. If you don't put all the right ingredients in, then, then you don't get your desired product. You know, and one of the things in prophecy today that we're seeing for, for prophecy to be fulfilled, you, you, you have to see a, a, a church that's turning its eye. And that's what we're seeing today. That's why, you know, we see many in America, they don't care about what's going on around the world anymore. They don't care about standing up in the values of God. They don't care about these things. You know, uh, I, I, you know, I wrote a little something here about sign watchers. And, and this is really disturbing when we, when we see sign watchers who, who reject righteousness, faith, and repentance. Because the sign watchers who do that don't realize that they themselves, hello, they themselves are a sign of the end times. They don't realize that they themselves are the very sign of the end times. I want to, you know, you know, before I get over to the, to the lukewarm church, I want to talk about Ezekiel 38 and 39. You know, I, I, I just see. You know, we see that in, in the scripture in Isaiah, something, something wipes out Damascus. We can only guess how this plays out. But, you know, we already see, the, you know, the, the, the president of Syria gas his own people with chemical and biological warfare. You know, and, and we, we don't see anybody in the world stepping up. And so he's getting emboldened. And I can see him doing, trying this on Israel, lobbying some of that over into Israel. And I see Israel retaliating with a nuclear weapon and wiping them out. See, and, and this is where we can see this going. You know, I mean, we can even say that, you know, Psalms 83, maybe that happened first. I don't know. I mean, Syria, you know, is a part of that, uh, you know, a, a Tyre, the, 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 the people of Tyre, Syria and Lebanon is, 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 is those, those are who they are today. So maybe that happened first. We don't know for sure. We can only speculate, but we'll start to see how things will play out more and more as we go forward. And then Ezekiel 38 and 39, you know, this very well can already be in the tribulation when that happens. And Russia, Turkey, and the surrounding nations march down to take Israel captive. But the Lord will intervene and destroy those armies, defeat them. So we're moving forward toward this. And so the only question now is, what's our part? I want to talk about the church a little bit. I want to focus a little bit on this because it's so easy to look out into the sky at the signs because then we don't have to look into our heart. What's that? What's that verse in Psalms 51, 10? Cleanse my heart and renew in me a right spirit. Oh, how so many don't want to look into to our, look, so many don't want to look into their own hearts. So many want to look out into the, to the signs. It's so much easier. Revelation chapter three, verse, you know, and, you know, and I can hear it again. I can hear the typing already. Oh, that the, 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 Jesus wasn't talking about us. He was talking about some other group. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 through 27. Oh, Jesus was talking about someone else. Hello. He's talking about the church. He's talking about this lukewarm behavior. And some folks, they want to, they want to argue that the lukewarm folks are saved. Is that what Jesus said? I, I, does that sound saved? I will spew you out of my mouth. These are lukewarm folks that Jesus was talking about in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. I I will say to you, depart from me, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commandments. 
disregarding my commands. I never knew you. In other words, Jesus saying, I never had an intimate relationship with you. So do we want to really play this? You know, do we do we want to claim grace only? You know, you know let me let me let me, before I get started in Revelation, let me tell you the you know, see the grace only crowd and the self righteous crowd, they are like distant cousins, okay? And they're not really that distant. They're pretty close actually. Because the 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 grace only crowd, it's all about them. Me me me. I get to sin, I get to shack up. I get to drink my butt light. And, you know, Jesus said that we are the light of the world. Notice he didn't say your butt light was the light of the world. But, you know, the way a lot of Christians act, you think that butt light is the light of the world. No, Jesus said you are the light. Put down the butt light and quit playing games. We're in the last leg. <coughs> We're in the last leg of this race. Do we really want to be running it with the butt light? Do you think that might slow us down a little bit? No, I, and again, I can hear the typing already. Save it. Save it. Self-righteous folks, same thing. It's all about me, me, me. I'm this. I'm better than you. I can do this. I can do that. See, with, with the grace only crowd and the self-righteous folks, it's all about self. They think about self. They don't realize that Oh, wait a second. This is about Christ living in me and through me. It's all about them. So again, the grace only crowd and the self-righteous crowd who walk in self-righteous works, they're like distant cousins. Distant, not so distant cousins. They're like fraternal twins. They don't really look alike, but they are alike. Revelation Chapter 3, verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot or cold, cold or hot. I would thou was cold or hot. In other words, I want some honesty from you. Don't give me lip service. Don't I, I don't want you to have the form without the power. Having a form of godliness, but rejecting the power thereof. Having the form, but denying the Holy Spirit access. When the Holy Spirit comes knocking at the door of your heart, access denied. I don't want you. No, don't come in. No, no, no. I like my fornication. I like my shacking up. I like beating on my wife. I like, you know, hey, hey, hey look, let's quit playing the games. And this is not about beating folks up. This is about, let's just get honest. See, when I went to that marriage class, it was about getting, I went there for years. It was about getting honest. And I had a teacher who, who would point things out. And that's what the word of God is for. If you read in, 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 uh, second Timothy chapter three and verse, uh, chapter three and chapter four, the word of God is to point things out in our life that we go from glory to glory through Christ Jesus. And notice Jesus won't beat us up. He will point things out without ripping us to shreds. And this is not about ripping anyone to shreds. This is about saying, Hey, it's time that we open our heart up. And get sincere and honest. That we grow up in the things of God. See the Lord's not looking at our past. Put the past behind you. Put those past mistakes behind you. And the mistakes you're presently making today. It's time that we put those mistakes behind us also. As we seek the Lord's strength. And the leading of the Holy Spirit in our life. Because thou say I am rich and increased with goods. And I have no need of nothing. In other words it's all good. I'm cool the way I am. Jesus loves me the way I am. I'm not going to change for nobody. Nobody tells me what to do. See, this is that attitude. That's that unrepentant attitude that I can live the way I want. I'm not giving my life to Christ. I'm going to do it my way. And again, that's that self-righteous attitude. And, and, and the grace only folks and the self-righteous folks, like I said, they're, they're twins they're, because it's all about self. It's not about Christ. Are we going to give our lives to Christ? Are we going to give our hearts to Christ? I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Look, are we going to come to the Lord? You know, in first Peter chapter one, verse six and seven, it says that the trying of our faith is more precious than that of gold to, to, to the Lord. There's sometimes we're going to go through a season of trials just because we're going through trials does not mean the Lord has left us. It just means that the Lord is refining us purifying us, pulling things out of us that shouldn't be in us. Are we going to run from that? No, don't run from that. That's the Lord working on you. He hasn't abandoned, abandoned you. Maybe there's family members you're believing God. 
to transform and change. Isaiah 55, 11 says that, that the word of God does not return to his throne void. Continue to speak the promises of God. All the promises of God are yes in him and amen in him to the glory of God in Christ Jesus. That's 2 Corinthians 1, 20. I want to take you to verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. See, again, today we're living in a day where the church folk crowd, for the most part, don't want to be rebuked, don't want to be chastened, don't tell me what to do. I do it my way. Grace, grace, grace. I, grace allows me to descend it up and, and, and kick it and party it and swing it and crack it and jack it. With my butt light. I want to take you to Matthew. See, uh, the first Peter two nine. Actually, I'm going to turn there first, and then I'll go over to uh, Matthew chapter seven. First Peter two nine. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Are you peculiar? Are you peculiar to your friends? Or do you fit right in with the darkness? Do you fit right in? Are, are you doing the same thing? If it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, if it swims like a duck. Ooh, I'm, I'll, let, I'll let you finish that one up. That we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's what Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 5. Let, let our deeds shine before all men that they may praise our heavenly father. See, that, see if people don't see Jesus in you, then who, who, look, even the people in the world aren't being fooled here. Actually, many in the world are more, walking more straight than the professing bunch. Because the professing bunch, they think they can get away with it. They're trying to run both sides of the fence. Thus, we see a lot of sign watching. We see a lot of folks, they're celebrating. They're doing the end zone dance before they get to the end zone. Matthew chapter 7. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, who calls Jesus Lord, Lord? These are professing Christians. Before you start typing, because I know there, there's always folks who want to say, these people aren't Christian. Well, you're right, because they're not going to heaven. So I guess you can say when it's all said and done, you, you can call them not Christian. Now, whether they were saved or never saved or whatever, it, well, it, well, let's just say like this. When it's all said and done, they're not going to heaven. So what? why even get into that debate, whether they were once saved or not saved? We know that they're not going because they're playing church. They're giving lip service. See, we're, we're not to be people of lip service. We're to be people who give our hearts to Christ, give our lives to him, but walk by faith. We're living in a day right now as I turn to uh, 2 Timothy. You know, 2 Th Thessalonians says that, uh, you know, they, 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 with all deceitfulness, they refuse the love of the truth that they might be saved. That they might be saved. They, they refuse the love of the truth that they might be saved. See, when we refuse the truth of God's word, then we're not going to find the Lord. First John 1, 6 says, if we say that we know him and walk in darkness, that we are lying. We're lying. And this is what a lot of folks are doing. They say that they know Christ, but they're practicing sin. They, they, they live in sin. Sin is on their schedule. They got something scheduled for the weekend that they know they shouldn't be doing. And this is scheduled three and four days ahead of time. And then they got it scheduled for the next week and the next week and the next week and the next week. That's living an unrepentant life premeditated sin where you're just going in and, and there's no struggle. You, you do, you're just doing it on purpose. You're not, you're not trying to fight it. You're doing it on, you're living in it. And then you say, Oh, because of grace, I get to do it because of grace. I don't have to get married. If you're living and you're shacking up with somebody, this is my advice. You either move on 